So the Pirates and Raiders Culture Pack DLC is out for Rome 2 and I was lucky enough to have a fan send me a key for it, as well as others who offered to buy it for me. Just wanted to say thanks to the person who did buy it, it really meant a lot and the same goes to people who offered, really very humbling. So what is a Culture Pack? Some of you may remember that Rome 2 launched alongside a Day 1 DLC Culture Pack called the Greek States Culture Pack that was included in the pre-order bonus. There was also the free for a limited time only Nomadic Tribes Culture Pack in late October. For those that own either of those packs, this pack is very similar in structure. The Culture Pack focuses on, the cult on one culture or general region on the map and their associated factions. These are factions that were already in the game but previously unplayable. It buffs their rosters with some new units, adds some new victory conditions, buildings, traits, technologies and of course unlocks them as a playable faction for the Grand Campaign. So what do you get in this culture pack? Well immediately noticeable is the three new factions under the recently added Balkan Tribes section of the faction selection screen. Each of these factions have the Balkan Tribes traits, minus 50% mercenary recruitment costs but plus 50% mercenary upkeep costs, so you'll be most likely recruiting mercenaries before a fight and disbanding them quickly afterwards. The RDA are a small nation of pirates and seafarers starting on the coast of the Adriatic. The Odrysian Kingdom, a former shadow of their past glory, have a hatred of all things Hellenic and begin on the coast of the Black Sea. And finally, Tylus, originally a Celtic tribe, have a great aversion to Thracian culture as they look to establish their home on the Isthmus of Tafros. The RDA are the most pirate-like faction in the culture pack, with a 200% income bonus from raiding and an extra recruitment slot in all ports, allowing them to muster up navies quickly. As well as this, they have a minus 20% wealth penalty from agriculture, so your best strategy is really to take to the sea and raid as many places as you can. The victory conditions for the RDA are somewhat unique, as it's the first and only faction that requires you to control 50 port settlements to win a military victory, which I think is a nice breakup from the regular conditions. There are six new units specific to the RDA. Illyrian Marines, which are highly trained medium armoured spear infantry. Illyrian Raiders, which are fast, uh, fast moving axe wielding stealth infantry. Illyrian Noble Hoplites, which are well drilled, very heavily armoured infantry. Raiding Hemiola, which is a fast boarding craft manned by Illyrian Raiders. And Assault Hexaries, a huge assault barge manned by Illyrian Raiders and Assault Tetraries, which is a large assault barge manned by Illyrian Raiders. This is the faction I've spent the most time with and I think it's the most fun, however they do feel underpowered against their Greek and Roman rivals. This nation is probably the hardest faction to play as on Legendary, as their main buff is Raiding, which annoys the hell out of their neighbours who just so happen to be the most powerful factions on the map. The Odrysian Kingdom are the most incomplete and dull faction in the entire game perhaps, fielding only 11 land units not including artillery. Even the recently released Gete faction has more unique units in their roster, and they were free. Their naval lineup is equally bare with just 10 units, for contrast the RDA have 15 naval units and most coastal factions have 16 or 17. Their starting perks include 100% income from raiding, which is the weakest of the lot, 2 experience to all missile units, and minus 20 to diplomatic relations with Hellenic cultures. To me this faction just seems really underwhelming and it seems like you'd be fielding the exact same armies all the time over and over again if you were to attempt to actually complete a campaign with them. Their one unique unit is Thracian Horsemen, which are a fast moving spear armed medium cavalry. The Odrysian Kingdom's victory conditions are similar to, similar to that of the other tribal nations in the game, which tops off the feeling of a faction that was shoehorned into the DLC without much thought for them. Tylus, being of Celtic origin, are an interesting faction because they blend Celtic units with Thracian units, giving you some unique results. 
Though not as bad as the Idrisian Kingdom, their roster does also feel somewhat lacking and overly familiar, which I do feel will give players fatigue with this faction if they are uh, going to attempt to complete a full campaign with them. Their starting buffs are plus 150% from raiding income, plus 1 experience for infantry recruits and minus 4 public order penalty for the presence of Balkan culture, which is a pretty severe penalty as they begin surrounded by Balkan factions. Their unique roster consists of Gallo-Thracian warriors, which are fast moving, hard hitting sword infantry, tribal warriors, which are well armoured medium swordsmen great in defence, and raiding horsemen, noble multi-role armed with javelin and sword. Their victory conditions are similar to the other tribal nations and almost identical to the Idrisian kingdoms. All in all a decent faction but doesn't have much lasting effect on the player and could have something added to them to make them more unique. Lastly we have 5 new mercenary units that can be recruited in Decia, Thracia and Illyria, including Thracian warriors and Falksmen which are both pretty cool units. The Romans also have access to 4 new auxiliaries in these regions if an auxiliary barracks building chain is present. Alongside that the factions have a few different technologies and a new religious building chain each and that's pretty much everything. As with my other reviews, I'm not going to say if you should purchase or not, rather I just try to inform people what they are buying and how much is really on offer. The price for this pack isn't too steep, but it probably is more than I would pay for it. 50% off will be a good price to come in at for me personally. For a Pirates and Raiders themed DLC, I feel that the naval aspect is lacking greatly and you're really just paying for some fairly average tribal factions, with the exception of the RDA who offer the most unique units, the toughest starting conditions and the most benefits to actually raiding other nations. Alongside that, you're encouraged to capture coastal territories, which is pretty unique. When the DLC was first revealed, I was expecting to see a new Pirates faction that you could either play as or have to deal with, which I think would have encouraged more in interest in naval combat. However, I think naval combat itself does need a lot of work, but that's for another video. Anyways, that's it for me. Make sure you let me know your thoughts on the DLC in the comments, if you'll be picking it up, if you already have it, or if you just don't carry it away. And also give me feedback on this review. I really appreciate everyone contributing to the videos and I'm trying to improve how I review things. Remember to follow on Twitter and like on Facebook and I'll see you in the next one.